do I like this? Or is everyone on Instagram just wearing it? That's like half of our world's problem, I think. Hello, my name is Amanda. Welcome back to my channel, Knits by Mandy. Today I'm wearing the first sweater I ever made because today's video, as you can tell from the title, is talking about things I wish I knew before I started knitting. Before we get started with this video, let me know in the comments what you wish you knew as a beginner and maybe we'll have some overlap. And go ahead and like and subscribe already. If you're already excited about this video, you can wait till the end if you really want. Um, I appreciate you being here and we'll get into the video. Now, when I first started to learn to knit, I was in the fifth grade and there were nearly as many resources on the internet now as there are today. And I found coming back to knitting and trying to teach myself new skills, there are just some hiccups along the way. And here are things that I wish I knew a year ago before I started. I wanted to make this video now kind of relatively new to my knitting journey because I know that the more you learn about something, the further you are away from the experience of being a beginner and of like knowing nothing about knitting at all. So I wanted to make this video, talk about what I've learned while I'm still kind of fresh into learning things and let's just get into it. Have you ever had the issue when you're knitting and you come across a new abbreviation or a new skill in a pattern and you're like, I don't know how to do that. So you type in how to make one right knitting tutorial on YouTube. Great except all tutorials are not created equally. And that's to say that some people can be really excellent knitters and they can be expert knitters, whatever that means, but that doesn't necessarily make they're a good teacher or they made a good video tutorial. So with that in mind, just don't get too precious about the tutorials that you're watching. Um, if you're feeling that you're watching a video over and over again and you're still not understanding the skill, it might be because the video you're watching just isn't that good at explaining it. And it, you can just go find another video. I know that's exhausting, so I've added some videos in the description that have helped me or some creators. I know Fairy Pink Knits makes great short videos and Sheep and Stitch also does a great way of explaining videos for beginners because some topics you need like a little more explanation, but sometimes if you're like just learning how to make an increase, you don't want to watch a nine minute video talking about all the different ways that increases can be used and how when this person makes socks, they do make one left increases, but when they turn the heel, like yada, 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 yada. I don't know because I don't make socks, but you get it. It's like when you're Googling recipes and you have to scroll through everything because everyone needs to use optimizer SEO. And so you're reading stories of how the grandma used to make the sweet potato vegan chili and you're just like, get me to what matters. Click around, feel free to explore. Sometimes finding the good tutorials is like harder than actually learning the skill. The second thing that would have been really helpful for me to know when I started knitting was knowing more about knitting trends and how that influences my inspiration and what I choose to make. I don't think I this all clicked when I was first knitting, was that things are trendy, things can be more popular online, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll like them for you. I talk about that in my what I made this year video and in my last, in my knitting process video. Like some things, might just be trendy, but they're not actually good contributions to your wardrobe. So having a critical eye from very early on um, by looking at things and being like, do I like this? Or is everyone on Instagram just wearing it? That's like half of our world's problem, I think. <laughs> I'm solving world peace and your knitting problems all at once. You're welcome. Number three, blocking is not your enemy. Blocking can be very scary, I understand that. And you might even be like, what's blocking? I don't understand. There's a whole knitting lexicon. Blocking is the process of washing your knits 
and in some cases laying them out really strategically so they dry in a certain shape um, and so that can include the process of pinning your wet work down so that when it dries it like dries in the shape you pinned it into i haven't done anything that intense because nothing i've knit really requires the pinning but i do love blocking as a process it can really transform your garments when it's appropriate and um i was really afraid of it as a beginner because you basically spend hours and hours making something and then people want you to dunk it in a you drown it in water which is scary um but i really like blocking i think it really changes your knits and now i can kind of tell when i go through instagram this is a little shady but i'm like i don't think they blocked that like they should really block that it'll look a lot better i just think that to myself but you'll be able to start to tell the difference immediately when you block your items with especially how they feel, how they drape, it will really affect the overall look and feel of your garment. And I will put um, some blocking tutorials in the comments below, because as we learned, not every tutorial is created equally. Number four is a tough one, but it's the idea of letting go of perfection. And I talked about this in my knitting process video or my knitting plans video, your hobby shouldn't stress you out. And something I found that was stressing me out with knitting was worrying about making mistakes. And you're just gonna make mistakes. It's just gonna happen. I had this really incorrect notion in my head that once you get really good at knitting, you just stop making mistakes and like your muscle memory becomes so perfect and you'll never have to rip anything back or you'll never have to fix anything after you make it because you'll just be so good at knitting. I mean, I'm a year in and I 100% still make mistakes and have to rip things back because we're constantly learning new skills. And when you just think about it, statistically, I am not a numbers gal, but when you have a sweater made of like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of stitches, the margin of error goes up and up and up the more you knit something because there's just more opportunities for you to mess something up, like drop a stitch, twist a stitch. Maybe you like sewed on your collar wonky. I definitely didn't just do that in the latest thing that I'm making. Um, so people make mistakes all throughout their knitting career. People leave sweaters with ends they didn't weave in because you can't see the real linen ends. So just like have some armpit strings. I have plenty of those in my sweaters. I have plenty of mistakes. I have like a hole right here. <laughs> it's fine. And um, don't let the mistakes and like the minutia take away from the joy of knitting and having a full complete item. And it's far more rewarding even to have a hand knit item with a bunch of mistakes than to go to the store and buy something. So I always remember that and always just try to keep the joy in knitting and in making because that's why we're here. We're not doing this because we have to. Um, we're doing it because we really enjoy it and we love it. And letting go of this idea that we need to make perfect garments and be, um, you know, perfect. And maybe this is something that I've just had. It's very freeing. So know that you're gonna make mistakes and that's all part of the learning process and we learn from our mistakes and we grow. So it might be something to talk about with your therapist. It's kind of heavy. <laughs> but it helped me a lot with my knitting. Something that I did not know about when I first started knitting was the different kinds of styles. Even early on when I learned when I was very young, I knew that there was English and continental knitting. I could not tell you the difference between the knitting. And so let me just break it down for you very quickly. There's two main types of knitting. There's English and there's continental. With English, you hold your working yarn in your right hand and typically you throw your yarn, which means you're physically wrapping the yarn around your needle every single time that you make a new stitch. On the other hand, there is continental knitting where you tension the yarn with your left hand and you most commonly pick your yarn. So if you're familiar with crochet, um, it's a very popular method I think for crocheters to learn because the, the motion is very similar to crocheting where you're kind of like 
sticking the yarn through a loop instead of physically wrapping, if that makes any sense. There is no right or wrong way. A lot of people um, will maybe like suggest you should do continental because it's so much faster. To me, the biggest advantage of learning different knitting styles is to give your hands a break because as we all know, and actually you might not know this because you're a beginner, repetitive motions can be kind of damaging to your fingy muscles, you can get carpal tunnel, you can get tendonitis. And so I found that trying different knitting styles has helped alleviate some strain. I have a style, I guess it's kind of in between the two. I hold the yarn in my left hand and I actually put it around each time. I've tried a little bit more with the continental picking. I don't really ever hold my working yarn in my right hand because that's a lot what I'm used to. But that's to say that there is no right or wrong way to knit. Like people can get kind of defensive or kind of, you know, militant about their knitting styles, but know that the method that works for you is the best one. And, you know, you don't have to worry about what's the fastest method. Because again, our hobbies aren't stressing us out and being fast isn't the only fun thing about knitting. And so if we're a little bit slower, there's nothing wrong with that. Taking your time, enjoying the process of making something kind of novel. Different strokes for different folks. You do you, find what works best for you and don't feel like you need to learn a certain style because it's faster, more efficient or anything like that. The next item that's good to know, we kind of touched on it in the last one, is that you can really strain and hurt your hands with knitting. And I'm not a doctor. I know like every knitter comes on here and it's like knitting can hurt your hands, but um, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm not a doctor. Look up some stretches for your hands. Honestly, I get a lot of shoulder strain too. So doing like yoga is really helpful for me, um, specifically for like shoulder openers or like making sure I'm moving my scapula around. Um, so yeah, be really cognizant of any strain that you're putting on your body because you wanna be able to knit and use your hands for a long time to come. So if you are feeling like there's strain in your hands, after knitting for a long time, take breaks. You know, if maybe marathon knitting for four hours is the best thing for our bodies on the long term, even though it feels really good to get a lot of work done in one sitting. While you're watching six episodes of Gilmore Girls in a row, and it's season six, you just want to power through because Lori, you just want Lori to go back to Yale, she's like being really annoying about it, and she's gonna be back with Logan, and really Jess comes back, it's like really hot, and you're like, oh, you shouldn't be with Jess, but she's like, anyway, yada, yada, yada. Take care of your hands. The next thing I want to talk about is pattern selection. We have a world of opportunities at our fingertips. There are so many patterns out there and it can be hard to know where to start. One thing I would recommend is you can look at free patterns and I think they're really helpful um, just to kind of get a feel for what patterns look like. However, I would recommend buying a pattern that is marketed towards beginners because you will get a different level of instruction and maybe the designer will go into more detail if it's specifically um, routed for beginners. Now, I only knit a very small number of patterns in this past year, so I only have like a few recommendations to make, but I know I've had really positive experiences with Jessie Mae Designs and her patterns. I really like them for a lot of reasons. They're size inclusive, they're on a sliding scale payment. So you can, I think, either pay like 25% off or half off or for the full thing, which is usually like $9. Um, and she has a lot of modifications in the pattern and goes into detail to kind of describe where maybe like stickier situations of a project might be. That's to say like those are ones that I remember making for the first time I was knitting something in the round and I just felt they, the pattern explained it really well. I was really happy with the finished product. And so that's my recommendation based off what I used. That's not to say that there aren't like other fabulous beginner designer patterns out there. The other thing is what kind of construction do you wanna use? 
And I would think of looking this at what kind of skills do you want to learn? Do you want to learn to knit in the round? Then make a top down sweater. If you like making panels and like mattress stitching everything together, I don't. But if you like that, then go ahead and make all of the drop shoulder sweaters that you want to. Um, all of, it's all about what kind of skills you want to attain and put in your knitting tool belt. There is no right or wrong way to make something. You're not a better knitter if you make things in the round. You're not a better knitter or a worse knitter if you make things on straight needles. Like it really doesn't matter at the, if the, at the end of the day you're making a finished product that you like. So don't let this idea of like, well, people like circular knit. So like I have to circular knit. I honestly love it. I way prefer to straight knitting straight needle knitting but if you like straight needle knitting then like do that you know it's all about what skills you want to learn so you can also kind of search patterns by the construction and by any skills that you'd like to know so we're walking away with the lesson of the day knit and have fun go out there enjoy your hobby you deserve it you're entitled to that and if you like this video go ahead give me a like you can subscribe for more knitting content I'm trying to post weekly. I'm not really sure um, what my schedule will be, but I'm really trying to post weekly here and we'll just have a fun little cozy knitting corner of the internet together. And thank you so much for being here again. I really appreciate it. Have fun. And I hope to see you soon. So, this isn't even editing me. I just finished filming this whole video and there's my little nook where I sleep because I do live in a studio apartment um, and I pushed everything onto my bed thinking that you couldn't see it and you definitely can see it in the viewfinder of the video in the view of the video. So that's just a real look into my life. I'm just being authentic. I'm being a relatable content creator and the sun's so bright and there's someone vacuuming in the hallway anyway thanks for i thank you for stopping by again i really really do appreciate it and i hope you have a great day and me and my pile of clothes that was on the floor and that was on my bed and that was in the video thank you we thank both we thank from us both of us we thank you